How do I gotta quit laughing now? <laughs> All right. Dear fellow campers, it was the best of times. What? Let's go! <laughs> I was gonna give you the old sidearm pat. And it was the worst of times. Day two of September. Actually, yesterday was the day that we waited for all year. Anyways, we're about two hours out from camp, and it's gonna get real. How was that for the short one? Oh, <laughs> you like it? Can, Is it short enough? I can do something with that. <laughs> uh, Anything else? Uh, I can't remember what you wanted me to say. Ryan's really been getting on me about talking too much, so I'm trying to condense it down. Uh, you just. I do like to talk to the camera. Did you see the comment on YouTube where that guy goes, Kyle loves talking to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I got a bull down, headed to go to Walgreens, and then unload at camp. Me and Ryan got to put all our saddle stuff on. We're saddle hunting. And uh, we're going to go hunt where he's had this trail camera hung. And it should be a good time. Hopefully. Hopefully it works out. Finally made it. So we're back at a spot that we were hunting last year, and we uh, wanted up gaining access to some state land that we're going to try to do something we've never done before for elk, and that's to kill one out of a saddle. So this area we hunt is kind of tricky, and we don't want to blow these elk out, and so instead of pushing the issue, we're going to kind of hunt the bottoms of these trees and these these these. Uh, drainages that are coming down we had a trail camera set up for weeks we sent it out here and had a good friend of ours go put it out for us and I've gotten big bulls cows mountain lions bears all kinds of stuff so we're gonna try to do something that may work may not work we're gonna find out for sure we're gonna try to dedicate at least three or four days to kill a bull out of a saddle so we brought all of our trophy line stuff we're gonna get everything thrown in our packs and start Huffing it up this hill. Here's one thing I've learned. Those days that you don't think something's gonna happen is when things happen. Right, Kyle? Oh, every time. You're like, Psh, we ain't, no, no, we're just going here to try to see what we can do. And all of a sudden, here he is, shooting him dead. Dude, I feel I feel horrible about covering up Smeagol with this bino harness. I love that shirt so much. <laughs> <laughs> I talked about it earlier, but this property is, is tricky to hunt. It's almost impossible to hunt it in the mornings because really anything with your thermal is going up because none of the elk are down in here when it's this warm. So they wait for the thermals, but we're going to be hitting it just right because the sun's starting to go over, over the mountain, so everything will be shaded right as soon as we get to the timber.
Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to be out here hunting elk. Lord, grant us uh, some mercy and some luck and uh, let our arrows fly true. Get us on the elk. Let everything work out and let us be in your will. Amen. Oh, that felt nice. Oh. You liked it? It was from my heart. Hey bear. Hey bear. Get. Is it blind? You may have to, Don. Oh God. Is it blind? No. It's like it's going blind. to smell us. Hey bear. Hey bear. <laughs> Get out of here. Throw something at her, baby. Get on this side, Ryan. Try to stay behind me. She smelled us. She smelled us. Hey, bear. I wouldn't do that. Mm -mm. Let's just back out. Back. This is so strange. I want to get near them cubs. Son, things got sketchy there for a second. I didn't want to get near her cubs. What's it real big when you was in there? You see the cub? The cub went up the trees, though. That's where he was mad. Yeah. I saw it. Was that I was like, where are they? Where are they? And I peek around a tree and I see you guys. So I know, and Ryan's drawn. I said, oh, they're fixing to shoot an elk. No, we're going to have to and shoot I, if it charged. And I said, you said, hey, bear. I said, oh, hey, bear. <laughs> All five arrows. <laughs> Nothing was harmed. That was fun, that was self-defense. It was fun, but it was a little spooky. I'll say this. My Snapchat story was a little, oh, little shaky. shaky. <laughs> Oh, he's these bulls 
the evening of the 8th. We're back at a property I've been hunting. We're going to try something a little bit different. I have another camera um, that's been set up on a wallow. I've been getting some pictures of some, some cows and spikes, and I got a good bull on it about two days ago covered in mud. There's like a series of wallows that work that kind of works down this this drainage. We've got a, it's kind of windy right now. But there's a front coming in tonight that should help kick off some of these elk to start talking to us. But uh, Kyle was over here this morning. We were hunting with Phil and spotted actually a pretty good bull pushing a bunch of cows over into this drainage where we're heading. And so hopefully they're just worked their way up and they're holding up. You know in the thick timber so we're just gonna we've got good wind it's loud so we'll be able to work our way quietly through it hopefully put a good stock on one or maybe cow call one in or something so to the top we got travis with us tonight we'll make it happen Trying to hug that shoulder, but it shot way right. Did I seen the arrow come out? But dude, he's hurt. I know, but I think I hit his leg. I don't know if he's. I don't think that's vitals. You had to go all the way through him. No, I, I think it did it. Did it bury up? I know it's filming. Let me see the footage. <laughs> well, the bull did exactly what I wanted him to do. I had Travis start calling because I thought all the cows were going to start working their way down. They all got up. And as soon as, I, as, soon as Travis started calling, they, he pulled them right up. But 
cows were about 55, 56. But he came in between the cows and me. Ranged them 46 yards. He was quarter two, but not hard enough that I didn't feel comfortable to try to tuck it behind his shoulder. You can hear the wind. I The wind was low whenever I shot. I was waiting on the wind to stay low because I was all over the place. And it looks like my arrow maybe had drifted and hit him right square in the shoulder. I think the arrow came out. I'm gonna go look and see how much penetration I had. He was hurt bad though, super bad. Well, we located the herd. I don't, did you already go over that? Yeah. Didn't see the bull. You can see behind us, it's about to start pouring down rain. I mean, it's bad luck. If it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any right now. But uh, I think we're just gonna keep looking, I guess, until it rains. And hopefully this isn't too bad, but I'd like to keep looking for blood until the very last second. Well, we're back. Spot where I shot the bull. Here we are, I'm gonna try to hike up as quietly as possible. We're gonna just take our sweet time. What we're gonna do is get to the edge of these trees and see if we can't spot him before he spots us. We'll give it a shot. There's some blood right there, we film. We're starting to get worried. All right, well, it's later the same afternoon. We got on a main trail right above where the last time we saw him. And sure enough, Phil picked up a little bit of blood and it was kind of like brushing off. It looked like on, on brush going up this main trail. And we followed it and it just got less and less and less. We found very small, minute drops of blood on just like these yellow aspen leaves. And we just lost blood. And then we just started grid searching. And looking back at the shot and comparing kind of where my arrow broke off, I think we all, obviously last night we were optimistic, but now looking back at it, I don't think I got enough penetration to really puncture the cavity. And I felt like it was the blood that was on that on the shaft of the arrow was just brushing off as he was running. So um, I still have a cow tag for this unit. I'm kind of in the the moral dilemma of, you know, I hate to do it, but I'm probably gonna go ahead and punch my tag for my bull, and then I've gotta have some meat, so obviously I have my cow tag still, so we're gonna, me and Phil are gonna continue to hunt uh, for our cows, so. I hate to see it, but it is what it is, it's bow hunting. Takes a man to do that. Some big bulls around here. I'm probably mm -hmm. gonna see a lot more of them too. So as soon as we got to where we was parking, we seen a little bull and a little bit bigger bull messing around in these trees above us. So they're going to go ahead and see what they can see up in here. We're only, man, 200, 250 yards from them right now. And uh, we'll see what happens. The thing is, is what just happened was the, the toughest thing I've ever seen happen mm -hmm. in, in hunting. 
ever. Yeah. I mean, for a guy to not shoot a, a big bull, giant bull, giant people once in a lifetime type bull. Takes it, a lot of guts. It shows a lot of character yeah. that there's, you know, we got a couple more days and hopefully we're hoping we spot the bull that he shot and then it'll be a different story, but wait, he's making a tough, tough, tough decision. You hear people talking about making that decision, but you're going to see it right here on camera on someone actually making that we decision. We had a 350 yeah. in our face bugling. Yeah. And so, you know, you can spin it however you want to spin it, mm -hmm. but it's the worst case. It's, possible. it's the worst case scenario ever. And it may ever happen ever again, <clears throat> but I mean, at this point, you just got to stick to your guns and do what you feel is right. So, uh, at the end of the day, meets meat, and that's what I'm after at the end of the day. You know, I'd love to have a, a giant bull hanging on my wall, but uh, I eat a lot of elk, so I'm not going to just quit hunting because I can't shoot a bull. Uh -huh.